What's up guys, FM Campbell, welcome to episode number 36 of the Aston Villa series. Remember to leave a like if you enjoy the episode, remember to, to subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content. But the main thing is for this episode, I want you guys to get in the comment section below and I want you guys to tell me something you'd like me to cover and to go through as to what I've been doing. A couple of people ask me every here now and then and this is an episode where I want to give you guys an opportunity to basically go, oh Tom... Um, is there, could you quickly have a look at this for me, or how do you do this, or I wouldn't have done it like this, why have you done it like that, and I'll, I will tell you and I'll go through things. So before you get any further into this video, now's the time to pause the video, ask the questions you want to ask, and I'll go through them whenever I get an opportunity to, or in the next episode, or in the episode after that, or whenever. But yeah, so we'll get straight into it. Last episode was a two month update, obviously as I had technical issues where I accidentally saved over previous saves meaning that we had two saves to go through. So, um, yeah, we'll quickly go through what's been happening since then. We left you after the Newcastle game, and we played against Roma in the Champions League, and we got our first win, first official win in the Champions League as manager of Aston Villa. Group A, we beat Roma 2-0, Memphis Depay scoring, and Balanta getting a second in the 82nd minute, um, getting us our first three points in the group in Group A. And we continued our winning streak. As you can see, we won every single game this episode. We are still only lost one game all season against Chelsea. We lost 3-1 in the Community Shield. But we played Ipswich in the Premier League and we had a nice comfortable 3-0 victory. Tyrone Mings against his old club from left back, scoring three. Absolute worldy. I did mention in the previous episode how much of a beast this guy is. He's so bloody consistent. Blackburn, though, we beat 3-0 again. Another comfortable victory. Another clean sheet. And you can see the clean sheets are rolling in at the moment. We beat them 3-0. Harry Kane with two. And Lovra Kalinic own goal. That's the Kalinic, by the way, that we sold to Blackburn. The goalkeeper that we um, signed on a free and then sold. Um, so, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's still still got Aston Villa at heart. Um, Spartak Moscow in our third group game in Group A. We beat them 2-0. Another clean sheet. Memphis Supply with both of the goals. This is where it leaves us in the group, whenever it loads up. We are currently sat top on seven points. We have won two and drawn one. Obviously, that draw against Dortmund. Um, Dortmund have won one, drawn one, lost one. So, they're on four points. Then you've got Roma have only won a game and lost two. Um, same with Sparta and Moscow as well. So, it's still very, very tight. But we are four points clear, a third position after only three games. So, hopefully, it will be um, a massive opportunity for us to really progress in the Champions League. Don't forget, we're targeted to reach the quarter-final. I want to win it. I really do think we can. We beat Barcelona um, in probably one of the most dramatic episodes I've ever put on this channel in the Europa League final. Um, I think it's episode 32. So make sure you go check out that one. If you uh, Honestly, I, I'm probably... I'm a self-critique anyway, but it is probably the best episode or the best video I've ever uploaded to this channel. That's how proud of it that I am. Beating Barcelona with Aston Villa um, after, what, two seasons. So, yeah, I was well well proud of myself, put it that way. Um, so that's where it does leave us in the group stages. Um, but we continued, though, after the Spartak Moscow game, and we continued our streak, and we beat Southampton 1-0 in the league. Uh, a very late winner, actually. Memphis Depay getting the only goal in the 84th minute getting three points on the board. This is where it leaves us for the Premier League. Um, we're currently top now by two points. So Chelsea have slipped up somewhere, which is good. Um, they looks like they're going to be, like I said in the previous episode, our main rivals for the league, which they were last season as well, but they tipped us to it on the last day. Um, but yeah, so fingers crossed that we can press on. I would really like to win the league. I think... I think it'll be really good for us to win every uh, every single trophy at least once that's available to us. Um, let's quickly go over to our profile. Um, if we go to the manager and go to ourselves, whenever it loads. So I'm, I'm exporting a video as I'm doing this one. So uh, we want to do our profile. And that'd be history, wouldn't it? History is what we want to, to look at. So achievements. Show me my trophies. Uh, awards, competitions. Right, so here we go. So we have won. Yeah, I know we've qualified. But I want to see what we've won. So we didn't win the trophy for a long, long time. Look. 
Uh, so we won the Europa League, we've won the FA Cup, we've won the Super Cup. Um, so ideally, we lost in the Community Shield, which is frustrating. But ideally, I would like to win the Capital One Cup, the Champions League, what else is available, and the Premier League. They are the three trophies that I'm aiming for this season. We are targeted to get to the final of the FA Cup as well. So, but yeah, Capital One Cup, Champions League, Premier League, and I think we've won everything that's available to us then, other than the Community Shield. So maybe if we do reach the final or, or win the, the uh, FA Cup or the league this season, maybe, and even if we win the Champions League, maybe we'll continue it just to see if we can get the clean sweep and go and win the Community Shield. That'll be ideal, but we'll see how we get on. Obviously, it's a long, long season. Lots of um, things to happen that could happen over the season. But we then played in the Capital One Cup fourth round. And look what happened. Probably, like, as I said a second ago, our biggest rivals. Just to let you know, by the way, whilst our um, ground's been upgraded, we're currently playing in the Rico Arena, which is the Coventry ground. So, um, yeah, we're not a Villa Park at the moment because our, our ground's been upgraded by something like 8,000 seats or something like that. Um but a couple of things to note, well, before I get into that, actually, we beat Chelsea in the Capital One Cup fourth round. And my God, I was absolutely over the moon. Chelsea are like our, as, as I said earlier, our massive rivals, let's be honest. They're, it's us and them for the league, really. I can't see any other teams, but maybe City are pipping us to it because United have fallen away, Arsenal have fallen away a little bit. And yeah, Chelsea are just so good on this game, uh, on this save at least. But Depay and Sterling got the goals against them. 2-0 victory and another clean sheet. It does mean that we go through to the... Um, is it the quarterfinal? Yeah, the quarterfinal, which hasn't been drawn yet. When's that drawn? Do you know, it hasn't even been drawn yet. That's because we've only just played it. It was played yesterday because it was initially supposed to be on the 1st, but it got moved to the 31st um, for, te for um, TV rights, as you can see it's on TV. So that's good for us because it gives us more money, so I don't really mind that. But yeah, we've beat them 2-0, so I was absolutely over the moon. A couple of bits of information to update you on. The youth recruitment level has been increased, um, I think. Let's see if we've got... We've got youth stadium. Yeah, youth level is now level 1. Youth recruitment is extensive youth recruitment, so I'm really trying to push that up right to the top level because I'd like to be starting to bring in some of our own players own English players, especially on the regen days and things like that. Um, Forrest have extended the Judge Steer loan deal. He's now staying with Nottingham Forest for another three months. They're paying all of his wages. The youth and trailing facility upgrades have been completed, which is brilliant news. If we go over to the board, and you'll see here, the youth facilities were completed on the 6th of the 10th. So on the, on the 10th of, uh, sorry, the 6th of October. And then the training facilities were also completed on the same day, 6th of October. The expansion in the stadium looks like we're going to be at the Rico Arena until January, February, March, April, May. January, February, March, April, May, yeah. Until May the 14th. So we're going to be at the Rico Arena until the 14th of May. Um, and yeah, we'll be moving into our stadium, which is a little bit bigger. Um, I forget how much, I'm guessing facilities again. Not board, no club. Is that telling us? Like, so it hasn't quite told us yet. So we're currently obviously at the Rico Arena. How do we look at Villa Park then? Do we just have to wait until we get there? Oh, here we go. Due to move back into the 55,000 capacity Villa Park after, ex after uh, planned expansion. So that is our regular stadium. It is 12,000, so it's a lot more now. I thought it was like 8,000. It is 12,215 seats expansion of Villa Park, which is completed on the 14th of May 2018. So um, less than a year, obviously, but it's quite a while to go. So we're currently at the Rico Arena for the Coventry Stadium. 32,000 all-seater, so we'll be getting an extra 23,000 fans um, getting behind us to be that 12th man, which is great news. Uh, we've had a couple of injury issues. Lacazette's out for four weeks with a fractured arm. Corchia's out for six to seven weeks with a broken collarbone. That's a real tough one because we've only got... Um, what's his name? Bloody... Oh, what's his bloody name? I completely forgot his name now. Uh, Jenkinson, where is he? Yeah, so Corchia, as you can see, he's out for another five to six weeks with a broken collarbone. Lacazette's out for another six to 11 days and he'll be back. But yeah, Corchia... 
a big, big miss because he's, an, he's a real big player for us. Jenkinson's our only available right back, so we don't even have centre backs that can play right back, which is a little bit tough to deal with, but we're managing it okay. Um, but I'd like to bring in a defensive midfielder. Ruben Neves isn't quite of that level just yet. Um, Lewis Cook, same scenario. So we only really have Lucas Romero and Gaston Gil Romero, and both of them aren't the best players. Well, Lucas Romero is a beast, but Gaston Gil Romero is falling away slightly. Um, so we'll maybe have to look at invest. I'd like to get a world beater. I really would. There's a couple that I've, I've spotted, which I won't look into, uh, won't go into in too much detail as of yet, but we'll obviously see what happens. Um, yeah, what I mentioned in the previous episodes, we had a complete, um, we basically, I, I, I had a look at the board, and then you get down here, your staff and your allocation of how many people you can have in each position. So our, sc our scout count increased right up to 23, so I went kind of scout crazy, if you like. Um, so yeah, I, I hired a load more scouts, and we've basically had a massive restructure of the scouting system. Now what I've done here is basically when you scout a player, say for instance you scout a player in the beginning of 2016 and you don't scout him again at all or none of your or none of your team scout him or anything like that, you will basically, um, as this loads up, bloody running slow because of bloody ex, ex, I make sport in a, a video as you can see Final Cut. Um, so yeah, sorry, um, so basically when you scout a player, Say for instance you scout him in 2016 and you don't scout him again. That initial report stays as your scouting report. So I had some players that were like potential to be five star in my team because it was a scouting report done so however long back and it was in comparison to your players then. So I had players like um, Grealish and, and oh, who else did I have? Like Ron Vla, players like that. And I had the centre backs being com in comparison to him, being compared to him so or them. So, basically, you have to then re-scout them. So, what I decided to do is I thought, do you know what? So many of these scout reports are so old. So, I went through my scouted list and the players that I've scouted. And as you can see, now there's not anywhere near as many. There was thousands. I think it was like, I think it was like 10,000 10, players I'd scouted over time. Something like that. So, if we have a look now, is it going to let me do it? Excuse me, will you select all? There we go. So now we've only scouted 382 players. So we've got scout reports for 382 players. I basically removed all scout reports. You can actually do it via here. Like scouting um, is, how did I do it? Wait, yeah, sorry, I have I not seen that? <laughs> Remove scout reports. Yeah, so I basically selected every single player like that and removed scout reports. And I've now completely sorted out the scouting system. I've set up assignments for all my new players. We've got 23 active scouts now and they're starting to bring through reports based on, um, say for instance, if we have a look at the details. So I'll be doing, uh, current potential is whatever, uh, 15 to 45 years old, don't really worry about, not really worried about the age, but the potential ability has to be at least four star. So that is the what I'm doing. Um, so there might be like three star players or three and a half star players. And just li basically leave these scouts ongoing forever and ever and ever to go scout in all these different countries. For example, we've got UK and Ireland, Southern Africa, Southeast Asia, South Europe, South Asia, um, South America, Scandinavia, Oceania, North America, Eastern Europe, Central Europe, lots of Central Europe because there's so many countries, Central America and Central Africa. So these are just all around the world, finding as many players as they can for me. Um, and then in the meantime, I will just sort of be looking at players myself. For example, we've got, obviously it's 1st of November now. In two months' time, we've, we'll be looking at the Bosmans. There'll be players that will be available to sign on a free from around Europe. So I'll be looking at these players and I'll be scouting the hell out of the players that will be leaving potentially on Bosmans. So when it comes to the end of December, I will be um, having a look at players. So for instance, if I go expiring in one year, this probably might run a little bit slow because of the, the export of the video that I'm doing. And so these are the current players on the transfer list as this loads. But yeah, so I, I will look at these players now. They're expiring a year, so within a year's time. And these guys will obviously be um, leaving on Bosmans. And then when it comes to the end of December, this is the time period where I will start to look at players that I'd maybe like to sign or if they're young enough I'd maybe be able to make some money on so I'd sign them on a free 
loan them out for as long as I can, then either at the end of the season or the season after, depending on what their value is. For example, Ander Herrera, well, we, he's, he's at a Premier League club, so he'll be unrealistic until the end of the season anyway. But let's have a look at, for example, Franco Acosta, this guy here. 1.6 million in value. If we signed him on a free, for example, I think we can actually... No, not yet. Um, he's at Celta Vigo in Spain. So we'll be able to sign him on a free come the, end, come the end of this year. He would then join it in the season. We would loan him out for a season. Hopefully his value would increase. His level would increase as well. He's not actually a, too bad of a player, to be fair to him. Franco Acosta. And then we'd either sell him or decide what we want to do in the, in the long-term future. And that's how, basically, my, my Bosman system to making money, actually, that's how I do it. So... It's just the issue sometimes of whether clubs are interested in loaning them, but that's where you have to be careful on the player um, reputation and role, what what you actually give them when you offer them a contract. So that is the reason um, for that. So that's basically how I'll do it. So we have a complete restructure of the scouting system. We've had a massive restructure of all the scouts and where they are, what they're doing, what they're looking for. And then all of these sort of players are what be the ones I go through individually. I'll have a sit down. And I'll just have a big massive sort of player search myself based on sort of all the different um, search criteria that I'll be doing. Obviously within our scouting and knowledge range, that's another bonus of the, of the scouts being all around the world. It's going to build up that knowledge of all the different countries around the world. And that will slowly um, increase it. As you can see, our scouting knowledge, our world knowledge is only 38%. We're obviously missing a lot of these areas. So I've got a lot of people going over in Eastern Europe, um, Scandinavia as well. We've got players there. We've got people in Africa over in East, uh, Southeast Asia and Oceania as well. So all of these places that we're trying to build the knowledge up and hopefully next in a couple of videos time you'll be able to see that the world knowledge will have increased. So fingers crossed that all goes to plan and that is the reason why we've had this scouting restructure. Couple of, uh, well, two more updates actually before we come to the end of the video. We've agreed to sign a player that I'm very going to struggle to pronounce. His name is Vodov, I'm guessing it might be Silent V, Dov Dovichenko, Vodovchenko, Vodovichenko. But he's joining Aston Villa on the 1st of the 1st, 2020. A very long time. The only thing that bugs me is his natural fitness, but he's 15 years old. He's on £7 a week at CSK in Moscow in the under 19s. And we are signing him for. How much are we signing him for? I can't, I can't even remember. Um, 2.5 million. Hopefully, he does. He is sort of. His potential continues until then he's got bags of potential as you can see um, currently a good signing for Skybet League 2 sides but yeah he's got real good positives he's had a work permit accepted it's gone through mental attributes run real other than that natural fitness strength will come with age other than that natural fitness his physical attributes are very good as well maybe his balance could be sorted out um, as a he's a Roman playmaker in a defensive midfield role that's kind of strange so um, I'd like to maybe because of his strength, obviously that will, it all depends on how he progresses in the next two years. Let's be honest, it's two years and a month, and he, well, two years and two months to the day that he joins us. So it's a long, long time. Hopefully CSKA don't destroy him too much, but he's a very cheap deal, and I think he could be one for the future. So yeah, I'm quite pleased with that deal. And the last update is we won Manager of the Month, which is good, always good news. Um, it might be around here somewhere actually. Uh, here we go only three games though so Stoke Brendan Rodgers come extremely close so we'll view the award so it does mean that we've won the award finally in October after two months with Jose Mourinho taking the stretch in October and September, August and September for this month for this season sorry uh, we are obviously doing well in um, in this month October without a loss So and rightly so we haven't lost all season so that's quite frustrating but we are uh, I think after the Newcastle game, we were 20 games, so we were 21, 22, 23 games now unbeaten in the Premier League. We've got Swansea in three days' time, and then we've got Spartak Moscow on the 7th in Group A of the Champions League. Hopefully we can get promoted, uh, promoted. we can secure um, qualification in the group very, very soon. We're doing well in the league, we beat Chelsea, knocked them out of the Capital One Cup. In regards to the Capital One Cup, these are the teams that are left in it. Um, I wonder if it it won't show anything yet. No, so that's done on the fourth or the eleventh. So not till the well three days time that gets drawn. But yeah, Aston Villa ourselves obviously. Man United are in. Swansea, Liverpool, Leeds are to play. Tottenham, Leicester are to play. 
Palace are through, Stoke are through, and then West Ham, Norwich. So realistically, you'd expect Liverpool to go through, you'd expect Tottenham to go through. So there's still United, Liverpool, Tottenham that are the big teams left in it. Uh, but knocking out Chelsea is a massive achievement, so I'm really pleased with that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much going to conclude the episode. Thank you very much for watching. Like I said at the beginning of the episode, remember to get your comments in and let me know what you want me to cover in future episodes. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to leave a like if you've enjoyed it. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this content and it's popping up on your YouTube timeline, sub boxes, whatever you, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. I'll see you in episode number 37 on Friday. And peace.